Welcome back to the program, Press of Opinions. Ben and Sinjin here, as always. Hello. Today, we'll be talking, discussing, reflecting on uh, one of our favorite movies that we've seen recently, Deadpool, the superhero movie starring Ryan Reynolds. And, Ryan Reynolds. And some other people. Um, right, right. I like to call him. Yes. Fantastic movie. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Saw it in theaters. Uh, you know, points the middle finger right back at the establishment. <laughs> you know, Batman v Superman. The establishment know. of uh, superhero movies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The commercialization of these movies is as such. There was a, so many movies out. Yeah. They're coming out you left and right, and more's more's coming it down. It certainly the line. makes. Uh, they're not going away. They're not going any. They're not going anywhere. It certainly makes light of a lot of established genre tropes and superhero tropes. Yeah. And. It's very self-referential in movies in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's, it's kind of a love letter to movie fans in yeah. a lot of ways. Oh, totally. Yeah, that's it, from the moment the opening credits are rolling and they're you know executive produced by this asshole and you know the the credits are unique. Yeah. Um, very self-referential right away. Very sarcastic. And if you're unfamiliar with the Deadpool character, don't worry about it. You don't have to go and buy you know thousands of dollars worth of comic books go online to message boards and you know you don't have to do any of that it, 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 it this is an origin story movie um it tells you everything you need to know about this character wade wilson wade wade wilson yeah wade w wade w wade wilson is how you pronounce it wade wilson <laughs> so deadpool is a movie that Ryan Reynolds has been trying to get made for a really long time. And yes. so, so long that I even forgot that he was in that X-Men Wolverine Origins movie as... Back in 2009, yeah. In 2009, when we were just <laughs> knee-high uh, little Rugrats you know, running around. Anyway, um, well, yeah. You know. But, yeah, so this movie was... Um, yeah, it was just fun. There was just so many reasons why this movie should have had some missteps or like yeah there were so many pitfalls financial pitfalls where they couldn't get the rights to characters or the cgi and explosive effects yeah they, it, could, they didn't even have the money to do yeah, the thing yeah. that they and wanted it, to do and kind of a weird quirky character who wears his mask for over half the movie like you don't actually get to see ryan reynolds even more than half the, half the movie yeah and for when you do get to see his face it's covered in scars and prosthetics yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, he's not so, se sexiest man of the year. And then you put scars all over him. For about 25% of the movie, they do flashbacks showing his relationship with uh, his girlfriend, played by um, Morena Baccarin from Homeland and uh, Firefly. Mm. Um, so, for, yeah, for about 25% of the movie, you get to see him in his full glorious hotness that everyone knows. Glorious, but for glorious, 70, glorious hotness. Yeah, he's yeah. A, I'm straight, but I would fuck him. Like... He's that hot, right. you know. All right. <laughs> anyway, but um, yeah, for the majority of the movie, either his face is covered, or his uh, it's covered in prosthetics and yeah. stuff like that, and um, it just works. I mean, everything kind of works, you yeah. know, in a way that you wouldn't necessarily expect from the trailers. I didn't really expect that. I thought, yeah, it looks funny. Um, well, but... I, I love T J Miller too. T J Miller. Oh plays, yeah, yeah. No, he, he, you know the the kind of he has the best laughs. T J so. Miller is uh, the guy that's given Wade his contracts. You know, before Wade turns into. Deadpool, and that's and he's part. He's there with Wade when he finds the name Deadpool, because that's what you you bet on is who's gonna live or die. And if you're at the top of the Deadpool, then you win. You know, you win the money. So everyone thinks Wade's gonna be killed, and uh, so on and so forth. But T.J. Miller brings that level of the okay, comedic that's what he the, of the, name. the comedic impact, and he thinks it. What is he? He, he liked it, right? Didn't he like the name, or was he calling him something else? No, no. He he was the one who thought of Deadpool. He's, he's the one like, who thought like, thought of the name. How about Deadpool? Deadpool? And then Ryan Reynolds was like, "It's like yeah, the Deadpool." He's like, "How about we drop the the the, the yeah? How about we drop the the?" <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I love T.J. Miller. He's um on Silicon Valley, and as as much as I love T.J. Miller playing a no-name, you know, barback just to smile and wear glasses and have frizzy hair. I appreciated his performance. The flip side of that is a character by the name of Colossus who's in the X-Men uh, you know, the the League of X-Men, who's one of the one of their main guys. Um, I thought that that was one of the worst things I've ever seen in a movie. Was, no, man, was, I disagree. Uh, I, I, thought, I thought I thought that was horrible. I thought I he was like perfectly that. placed in the movie to counteract 
you know, like he represented, the, you know, like the ideal superhero who mm. always strove for, you know, service, for and service like, and yeah. to do the right thing at every step and always optimistic and Deadpool is like the opposite, like the simple, I, I, I thought they kind of bounced off each other really well and it was a good way of, um, of, of mixing like yeah. the classic superhero archetype and seeing how that interacts with Deadpool. You know, I, I thought they had really, really good chemistry as far as two characters go and even though Colossus was steel the whole time yeah. like a cgi creation yeah I, I thought it worked you know i mean you know it wasn't the worst thing especially in light of that they chose colossus and megason teenage warhead because of their budget they couldn't afford the rights to more illustrious wolverine and characters like, like yeah. wolverine or or anyone in the main you know x-men squad they couldn't afford to bring in i'm sure the sequel to deadpool a lot more money back now that now. yeah well as of this recording deadpool is the highest grossing r-rated movie of all time yeah so you can bet that it'll be the sequel will be big yeah um although i think an increased budget will help but i hope they don't go too crazy you know because the whole core of why this movie was so good is that they didn't make it this epic sweeping thing with tons of characters like it needs to be focused you know it's like it's like what we were talking about with, with um with batman vs superman that when you just make it this big thing with all this shit going on, mm -hmm. it ends up becoming a not a great movie unless you're a really unless you're a really talented filmmaker and you can and you can um, handle all these elements. Well, you can edit down. You know yeah. what I mean? That's what it's all about. Is um, but I, I just I think the more I mean, as these franchises bring in more and more characters, as long as you're containing them to a single movie. It's not. I don't see how whether it's. I don't see how the quality is going to improve. Like, one of the main problems with Avengers: Age of Ultron was they just, you know, they basically doubled the character count over the first Avengers, and that movie already had too many characters. Yeah. So I mean, I, the, I don't. The writing's on the wall. Right? Aside from twelve-year-olds thinking this is cool, I don't see what the appeal is in just flooding with more and more shit. Well, the people that are currently working on the Infinity Wars. You know the uh, where the Avengers will be in terms of what movies are being released in like two three year span from now. They say that there's sixty seven characters that'll be in in the Infinity Wars. In that, in, that, in those two movies, th th sixty seven credited. As if that's characters. a good thing. They're like, hey, look at all these characters. Isn't it that's, great? That's literally about like, one minute per character. It's it's so fucking stupid. I, I mean, don't you, I don't get it. Because you have all the Guardians of the Galaxy, you yeah. have all the Avengers, you have all the these new characters that are going to be in it you yeah. know, developed over the course of the next couple of years and you're going to throw them all into one big shitstorm of a movie. It, 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 it's a it's Who a cares? it's a philosophy that makes no sense to me especially when you when you look at what else Marvel is doing on the TV front, like they have an entire show devoted to Daredevil. Yeah. One character. Yeah. And okay, sure, there's also Punisher and Electra and a few more. But, but just but, by, by the way, it's really cool. Yeah. It, it, the Daredevil series on Netflix. If you haven't seen the Daredevil series on Netflix, you need to go check it out because, you know, Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin is amazing. Uh, you got the guy from The Walking Dead as the Punisher, and he. It's incredible. I can't. I won't. Even, I can't even talk about. Anyway, it. right? Yeah, we don't we'll talk do, about it on on, on, oh, on some other program. Ooh, um, it's good, but like you see, just amazing TV on HBO and Showtime, and I'd yeah. rather. There's so many shows that I love I, better I than, than any movie. It, it's you know? two very different in terms of like the blockbuster space of movies. It's just two totally opposite ideologies. You look at TV, and it's about paying attention, respecting the viewer's intelligence. Getting really involved, inventing with characters, new, yeah, developing those characters. With blockbuster yeah. movies, they're getting dumber and dumber. It's yeah. turn your brain off completely. We don't care. Aside from Nolan's films, blockbusters for the last two years have been just as stupid as possible, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to Deadpool though. With Deadpool, um, it was a, just a fun movie to watch. Um, didn't have any deep themes or anything, but it was just a really fun, goofy movie. Who, yeah, no one, said it, no one said it needed to have deep themes, you know what yeah, I mean? It's it, like... it, it, was, it was kind of the exact subversion of the genre that was needed, and I think that's why it did so well. And, and Deadpool's the perfect character to do that. I mean, his whole thing was is about, you know, going his own way yeah. and, like, you know, kind of communicating, like, a one-on-one -on -one narrative with the audience as if like he is hyper aware he he knows he's a character he knows yeah. he's just a cartoon and so 
you can point the mirror back at the you know how movies should be made or how the story should be told and you know i thought they did really really well with it i'm looking forward to the sequel we definitely recommend it right yeah deadpool better than batman versus superman <laughs>